the moon is squaring both Mercury and Venus today. Also, the moon is in Pisces today. Having the moon in Pisces right now, especially with this square between the moon and Mercury and Venus, there is an ability or an opportunity at least to be a lot more compassionate towards yourself and towards others, all right? Hello everyone, welcome to your daily dose of astrology and tarot. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. My name is Eric, if you are new to the channel, welcome, it is very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up guys? So, daily dose, um, new series that I'm starting that I'm basically replacing morning coffee with here on the channel. It just feels like that's the direction that we're moving in, so we're gonna do it. Um, so in the Daily Dose, we talk about uh, major aspects um, that I think are best for us to uh, focus on or internalize, I guess, or understand, talk through, contemplate um, in any given day, so in that day, right? And we will be using the sidereal uh, astrology uh, uh, system here. So uh, when I'm talking about placements of the planets in the sky, this is from the true sidereal point of view, not from the tropical or the mainstream point of view. Uh, I invite you, if you're fairly new to sidereal, I invite you to like sit back and just listen, keep an open mind and see how things may be resonating for you. If you would like to cross-reference that with your favorite tropical or mainstream astrologers, I highly recommend that you do that. Um, there's value in all of these systems. No system is better. No one system is better than the other. Me personally, I'm finding more value in the sidereal uh, system because it's just making more sense for me personally, okay? But it doesn't have to resonate for you in that way, yes? Now, with that said, um, these readings are do have a little bit of a time element to them because we're talking about what's going on within the planets in that given day. However, the energies of the planets and the transitions and the aspects of these planets can last for longer than that one short time frame of that day. Keep that in mind. So if you are coming into this reading days after today, which is the 3rd of June, and you and the title caught your attention, and you know, as you go through the, the session, it's resonating for you, then, then take that energy, take what resonates for you. Yeah, this is also still a general reading, so please keep that in mind. Take what resonates and leave what doesn't. But at the same time, um, you know, even though we are having certain aspects in one day, you still could be moving through those energies or maybe experiencing those energies a little bit later. Or maybe it's that you go, you went through whatever we're talking about on any given day. And then later on down the road, you're now ready to get a deeper understanding of what happened for you in that moment, in that time period. So now that you can gain a, a, a greater conscious understanding of what happened during that time or what is happening for you at any given time. Yes. Excellent. Um, I got my hair trimmed yesterday. Ah! Isn't it cute? This is the first time I've gotten my hair trimmed in like four or five years, to be honest. I was still with my ex the last time I got my hair trimmed. And it wasn't long after that, but that after I got it trimmed that we ended up breaking up. But it's been like four or five years now. Um, and ironically enough, like one of my friends did it. She did a great job. Um, but ironically enough, I still have this one little ringlet that's longer than everything else. And she evened everything out yesterday. But I have different textures within my hair. Some of my hair is frizzy. Some of my hair is curly, like super thick, tight curls. And so that's kind of what makes this kind of thing happen. But it's cute. It's my, it's my own little natural rat tail. I like it. So we've got to keep it. All right, guys. So um, let's settle in here. Give me just one second. I'm going to pause for a second. And then we're going to get into the session here. Yeah. All right, guys. Let's get into this here and see what we've got for today. Here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, 
circumstances, relationships, romances, and life and places in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, guys. So let's get into this here. Our aspect of the day um, that I think needs the most conscious focus here uh, is involving the moon, both with Mercury and Venus. The moon is squaring both Mercury and Venus today. Also, the moon is in Pisces today. All right. So let's talk about that. Sensitivities may be a bit high today with the moon in sensitive and intuitive Pisces, but also um, your intuition may be quite heightened today. And with what else, what's going on here in the chart and everything, that's actually a really supportive uh, uh, placement, okay, in terms of what we're going to, what could be potentially happening for you today or just in this energ energ energetic environment, okay. Uh, today may be a day where memories may surface. Um, if so, this would be a really great time to handle that uh, and to to tackle that and utilize the energies of Neptune still being square with Mercury right now. You can use those energies to get past any sort of illusions or get past the story you may have told yourself about what could be coming up for you on an emotional level. Now, with the moon being in Pisces, this is a pretty supportive element in terms of healing or dealing with past circumstances. Maybe even I just heard past karma. Uh, past karma. Where is the south node? The south node is in Scorpio right now. Okay. So past, uh, past life energies may be coming up to the forefront for you. Um, also, some sort of karmic energies may be coming up to the surface to be dealt with. But with the moon in Pisces, again, this is a really uh, a really supportive aspect because Pisces is a water sign. Pisces is very sensitive, very unconditionally loving, and also very intuitive and psychic. Uh, Pisces is the ruler of the 12th house. The 12th house can, in some cases or in some systems, is called uh, the house of God. But also the 12th house is about the collective. The 12th house is about um, unity, understanding. Um, the, the Pisces is the opposite of, of, uh, of uh, wow, of, of Virgo. And we all know Virgo is a very perfectionistic type of energy. Virgo is all about your health, um, is about being of service, but Virgo is also about uh, dotting your T's, I'm sorry, dotting your I's and crossing your T's, making sure all the fine details are in place. So that can be a little bit of a, a stressful energy sometimes, but with Pisces being the opposite of that, Pisces is very much about perfection as well, just like Venus, I'm sorry, just like uh, uh, Virgo is. But Pisces looks at perfection from a universal, collective, and spiritual point of view, whereas Virgo looks at perfection from a physical, three-dimensional point of view. So with the moon being in Pisces, there could be a propensity towards feeling very compassionate or having an open mind or the ability to open your mind up to uh, deeper elements, higher points of view, other perspectives. Um, and, and it's a supportive energy, especially with what's going on with um, a lot of the internal focus that's happening right now in the collective or at least astrologically. Having the moon in Pisces right now, especially with this square between the moon and Mercury and Venus, there is an ability or an opportunity at least to be a lot more compassionate towards yourself and towards others, all right? Uh, I don't want to jump ahead of myself, so let me go back to my notes here. Uh, with the moon squaring up with uh, Venus, uh, your values and interpersonal relationships may be called into question at this time. Um, but if something needs to be discussed between you and someone else, if you're having like trouble in a relationship, whether that be a friendship or a, a marriage or a, a romantic relationship or maybe even a business partnership, um, this square between the moon and Venus could bring that discrepancy or the, that drama or those issues up to the forefront of your mind. You may want to communicate about it um, 
especially with Venus being in Gemini. I feel like if there is some sort of energy that needs to be hashed out between you and another person, this energy or this, excuse me, these aspects or these transits could be causing you or influencing you to want to talk about it. Because with Venus in Gemini right now, and Venus is going to be in Gemini for a while. Um, yeah, Venus just entered into Gemini as of like noon Eastern Standard Time. Venus will only be at two degrees of Gemini, okay? So this is like the beginning of Gemini. And I feel like because this is the beginning of Gemini, there could be some feelings or some desire to talk about something. And with the moon being in Pisces right now, that's a good idea. You know, that's supportive of it because you do have the supportive energies of, uh, you know, feeling compassionate, feeling much more open-minded, um, or at least just being more willing to come to a resolution that benefits both parties. Now, you do still have Mercury in retrograde right now, which, to be quite honest, when you really think about it, Mercury being in retrograde is kind of a supportive energy in all of this if you are feeling like hashing something out or talking about something with somebody. Now, you do have to keep in mind, though, with Mercury in retrograde, there is a propensity or a... Um, uh, a propensity towards miscommunication. So if you do end up hashing something out or having a conversation with someone about something, make sure that you are choosing your words correctly, wisely, not correctly, wisely, and make sure to allow yourself to be open to listening. Again, with the moon in Pisces, there is probably a good chance that you would be more willing to listen. Some people that are not really all that compassionate may all of a sudden, out of nowhere it may seem, feel or seem like they are more compassionate than usual. That would be the moon in Pisces right now, okay? Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's what I have in terms of my notes so far, but I also have the chart in front of me so that I could, because I was, I was sitting at, at, at my computer this morning, you know, watching the, the chart happen and there was all these things coming up that I couldn't, I didn't necessarily want to spend all the time writing down. So I have the chart in front of me right here so that I can talk about it and look at things as we're talking about it. Now, some cards have come out from the Moonology deck here while I was talking about this. And it, I just, I feel very strongly that there is going to be a, an, uh, uh, some sort of inspiration or influence to hash some things out but it's not but again with the moon being in Pisces you guys it doesn't feel like anyone is really trying to hash anything out from an egoic point of view and that actually would not be a wise thing to do right now especially with Mars being in Cancer at the moment so let me talk about this oh my god this is so perfect look at look at what's come out here you have full moon in Cancer a personal issue reaches resolution. So like I was saying, my intuition was really picking up on the fact that some of you may really feel like you want to discuss something right now, and that is a good idea. Just make sure that you're communicating at a, from a fair point of view, from a balanced point of view. Um, but you do have luck on your side in terms of this situation with the, this, uh, this new moon in Sagittarius card. And then finally, bring love into the situation. But that's going to be so much easier than maybe than normal because the moon is in Pisces right now, okay? And the moon is going to be in Pisces all day. Um, I don't think it's going to move into, well, let's see. Um, as of noon, the moon is only at eight degrees of Pisces. And Pisces, uh, the, the, the thing about the true sidereal system is that not only does it take into account where the actual constellations are and in the sky, and it adds Ophiuchus into the equation, but it also takes into account how big the actual constellations are, because technically speaking, they're not all 30 degrees. I mean, that was part of the tropical system to make everything even so that it fit up with the, the, the seasons at the time of the implementation, and that's great, but that's not technically how big they actually are. And Pisces is one of the bigger, uh, uh, it's not the biggest, Virgo is the biggest constellation in, the, in our sky, but Pisces is one of the larger ones in comparison. So Pi so the moon is going to be in Pisces, I want to say, maybe for the next two days. So today, tomorrow, 
most likely. Maybe I, I didn't look at this specifically, but I, for the next, uh, my intuition is saying, or my guidance is, my guides are saying, for about the next two days, the moon is going to be in Pisces. So that's a supportive aspect here, all right? That's a really supportive aspect in terms of bringing love into the situation. Now, let's talk about some of the deeper aspects that are going on here. Um, <clears throat> Another supportive aspect of these energies right now is, in fact, Saturn trining with the sun. So, um, this whole this whole period right now for us um, is very supportive of digging deep within yourself and realigning. Right now, Sagittarius. I'm sorry. Right now, uh, Saturn is is still retrograde, and it's still ret it's going to be retrograde for the next few for the next six months, something like that. Um, but it's also retrograde through Capricorn. So Capricorn is its home sign, of course, but um, with, with, with that, there is, a, a, there is an element or a, an ability to realign yourself on an internal level, to reshape your path, or to decide whether or not you want to take a new path. And with, the, with Saturn trining the sun right now, or basically your sense of your core self, there are supportive aspects in that trine of realigning, reshaping, and reworking your path and direction or what it is you are moving forward towards in your life. Um, so this is really all about reshaping your internal reality with the moon squaring up with Mercury, which is also retrograde, and Venus, at least today. It, what it seems like here is these energies are supportive or are working towards helping you gain a deeper understanding about your reality, how you align with your reality, your thoughts about your reality, and also your interpersonal relationships at this time. And with the Saturn trining the sun, this is a definitely an uplifting energy, a harmonizing energy with Saturn to help you reshape and realign. It still may be difficult. We're not saying that it's going to be, that this is really all that easy, especially when you're dealing with deeper aspects of your core self, but that trine between the sun and Saturn is really helping you re-identify and reshape uh, and, and maybe get even like a new level of discipline into your life right now. Now, there are some other deeper aspects here. Um, Neptune is conjunct the moon which is really beautiful because that conjunction between the moon and Neptune, again, is helping you to see clearly or, 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 or it's giving you the opportunity to potentially see through a lot of illusions in your life, okay? Uh, now, the ne but Neptune, also keep in mind what, what is supporting that, I want to say, even though it's a difficult aspect, what's also supporting seeing past the illusions is Mercury, retrograde Mercury, squ still squaring up with Neptune, all right? So, it, it, in some cases, you some may say or some may feel like the illusions are heightened at this time, um, and they're much harder to control. But quite frankly, I see a positive aspect in that, in terms of if things, if certain illusions are heightened, then that's giving you a window of opportunity to really get down to the bottom of what those illusions really represent for you, okay? Now, uh, oh, I forgot about this. With Mars being in Cancer, Mars is debilitated in Cancer. Mars is going to be in Cancer until, I want to say, like July 5th. I believe that's that's what when Mars will be transiting into Leo. But with Mars in Cancer, Mars is debilitated in Cancer. And how but however, with this trine between uh, Saturn and the Sun, where your internal reality or your alignment to reality is already in focus, there is a, this debilitating aspect between Mars and can in with Mars in Cancer is also supportive of you hashing things out with other people because Mars's power is debilitated. So this egocentric drive or um, a sense of egotism, but also how your drive relates to other people or affects other people could be in focus right now. So with Mercury squaring up with Venus and also Venus being in Gemini, and the moon being in Pisces, you guys, this really feels like really beautiful energy to work some things out. Uh, you are very close to achieving your goal has come out here in relation to that. So keep up the good work, I want to say. Um, allow yourself to be compassionate. Allow yourself to be understanding. Allow yourself to 
work towards seeing the other point of view, okay, if that's necessary. Uh, let's see, last thing I want to say, um, well, not last thing, but another positive aspect here would be Chiron, uh, with a, a, a habit, there's a sex a sextile between Chiron and the Sun. Now, again, your sense of focus, your sense of internal reality, your sense of identity, there is ability to heal that right now. But with a sextile, you have to choose to walk through that door of opportunity. Okay, to walk through that door of potential creation. Right. What else? Uh, what else is Chiron doing? Chiron is also sextile Saturn, there you go, and is semi-sextile uh, Uranus, okay. Um, let's see, what else, what else, what else? There was more I wanted to talk about. Ah, yes, Jupiter. Now, Jupiter is trining both Mercury and Venus. So that's another supportive aspect here in terms of expansion, luck, and good fortune. So again, this feels like a really opportune time to work on some interpersonal relationships. With Jupiter trining both Mercury and uh, Venus here, again, there's more opportunity for you to see the bigger picture because Jupiter is a, is a planet of expansion, all right? See, look, there it is again. A personal issue comes to resolution. Did I say that correctly? A personal issue reaches uh, 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 reaches resolution, and and that this trine between uh, Venus, Mercury, and Jupiter, and also the square with the Moon, Venus, and Mer Mercury, things come to the forefront. But there's luck on your side because Jupiter is has this trining aspect to what could be coming up to the focus. So there's harmonizing here. There's ability to see the bigger picture. There's ability to expand on the situation and really understand different points of view. The answers that you need are coming, are at the bottom of the deck, full moon and in Gemini. But, and also keep in mind guys, that Venus is in Gemini right now. So the ability to communicate on a balanced and harmonious level is real strong right now. Okay. All right. I think we're good there. I want to get into some cards. Into some more cards. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I never finished my, my, my point about Mars. Uh, Mars is in Cancer right now. Yes, but Mars is trining with the moon. And remember, the moon is in Pisces. So even though Mars is debilitated here, it kind of feels like this is an energy of him kind of like... The Martian energies or Mars, the Mars energy kind of being like, maybe reluctantly, but kind of just like sitting down and being like, and being humbled right now and being like, okay, I think I need to just sit, sit down, shut up and listen. That's not something, it's not easy to get Mars to do that. <laughs> okay. But even though, see, so this to me is how a debilitated aspect could work in your favor if a lot of the other energies align like we see here in today's aspects um and if you choose to allow it okay if you take advantage of that aspect all right i'm gonna give this two more shuffles here and we're gonna get into some tarot last shuffle so how would you like to expand on this for us, please, Spirit? What would you like us to, to know? What would you like to discuss with us about this? Okay, first card out is the Two of Swords. All right. Overall energy, we do have the Seven of Wands. Okay, so this is definitely talking about this interpersonal relationship energy here with the seven of wands and the two of swords, which is the first card that has come out. I feel like, um, in terms of some sort of, uh, interpersonal relationship or some sort of drama between you and somebody else, there has been a bit of a stalemate here. Um, and defenses have been really high. You have the two of swords here. You also have it with the nine of wands. All right, there's been an energy of keeping up appearance or keeping up with the status quo of this situation or this relationship. There has been a stalemate. I feel like both sides of the equation, or even if there are more than two sides, 
all sides of the equation have kind of settled into this energy of like holding their ground, um, keeping and uh, maintaining their point of view, whatever point of view they came to up until this point uh, in the situation, and maybe not even really discussing it any longer. Um, there may have been in the past, there may have been an attempt to discuss things, but that may not have gone well, or it may not have just uh, ended in the resolution that you may have been seeking or may have been hoping for or intending uh, intending to come through. So um, it feels like there's been a stalemate here and people have just been on their own sides persevering with their own point of view. And yet underneath the surface, there is this feeling of wanting to take a leap of faith with the fool here, wanting to start over, wanting to put this to an end, the Ten of Swords. And yet... I see. I see. I see. I'm sorry. Hold on a second. Okay. So this is where you've been. Two of Swords and the Nine of Wands. Holding your own, holding your ground, and just persevering with your point of view. And yet underneath the surface, there has been this desire or this push or inspiration even maybe to clear the situation, to bring it to an end. Um, and yet it's the defensiveness here the Seven of Wands, and the Two of Swords that may have kept people from discussing this. I do feel like for some of you out there, there is a conscious feeling um, to work this out, whatever this might be for you here. Uh, you have the Devil in Reverse that is coupled with the Fool and the Ten of Swords. Now, what the devil in reverse is saying to me here is somehow or some, it, what I want to say is you've gotten past the illusion or someone has gotten past the illusion or maybe just the devilish aspect, uh, the toxicity, what may have gone wrong between the two of you or in this situation. It does feel like, again, this is the moon in Pisces. It does feel like there is an, a level of deep understanding or maybe even just deep compassion that seems to be bubbling up from the, uh, bubbling up to the surface from deep, deep down within you. And however, there is still a reluctance here. I feel like there is, still is or has been a reluctance here to discuss that or even honor that. And mainly because uh, mainly because it feels like you don't necessarily know which way to go, how to go about it, or even whether it's beneficial to do it at all. It does feel like there seems to be a bit of an autopilot defense mechanism here that in this case will say better, it's the phrase, uh, what is it? Um, better the devil you know. Uh, rather than the devil you don't. I know that's not the exact way of saying it, but that's basically the situation. So there's a bit of an autopilot energy that has been going on here. Well, it's better for me to just keep my boundaries, hold my ground instead of trying to work this out again or open up to this again because we all know that didn't go too well last time or at least we didn't get what we wanted last time. So is it really worth it? However, while you've been in or while someone has been in this defensive, holding their ground, holding their space energy, there has been a change in perspective. The hanged man. The hanged man is also indicative of Piscean energy. And where is the moon right now? In Pisces. And there seems to have been some sort of change in perspective, also a change of heart. Underneath the hanged man is the Knight of Cups. Okay, there is a change of heart here, and this change of heart does feel like it's more, it's coming from a compassionate place, that's true, but also there is a practical element to this. Underneath the Knight of Cups is the Knight of Pentacles to the Eight of Cups, also, yeah, also to Judgment and the Empress. Um, but what it feels like here is, even though some some of you or someone here may be reluctant to really try and go forward and work things out, there is still a, a, a level of practicality involved with the Knight of Pentacles. Slowly but surely, you guys will, if you use these energies correctly, if you use them wisely, you will be able to hash this out, or what I heard was, leave the past behind. It's time to leave the past behind and rise above this. You're being guided and called to with the Judgment card. Underneath Judgment is the, queen, is, is the Empress, and then the King of Swords and the Sun. 
okay? So compassion, understanding, and nurturance is really going to help you see clearly what needs to change or what's really going on here. Maybe even communicate clearly with the King of Swords and then bring light to the situation. The sun, bring illumination to the situation, bring happiness and contentment and abundance to everyone in this situation by clearing out these energies. All right. So the topic of this of today or just this energetic transit is all about working things out with significant others or people you just may have be at odds with. All right. Very supportive of that at this time. Excellent. Um, yes, let's do some clarification. What I want to start with is the devil in reverse with the Ten of Swords and the Fool. This propensity... I think that's like my favorite word right now, propensity. Anyway, this uh, propensity or in, inspiration towards leaving the past behind and really ending this situation, taking a leap of faith... And working to end the drama between you and some other people, we'll say. Five shuffles? Yes. One. We're going to start there. So with the moon, the ten of swords, and the fool. Oh, I'm sorry. The fool, the ten of swords, and the shadow side or the devil in reverse. Yeah, this is two. Three. Four. Oh! Okay, well, one card came out. And five. Okay. So what seems to be leading you towards wanting to take this leap of faith? The fool wanting to end this situation? And um, what, what seems to be leading you towards that is a tower moment. You have the tower here that popped out while I was shuffling, but the tower came out in reverse. Uh, and this feels like it was an internal tower moment. This feels like a, a, a shakeup for you that ended the illusion that the devil had or ended the grasp or the grip the devil had in this circumstance for you. Okay, And this feels like it was a past tower moment. It feels like it's something that may have happened a little bit of time in the past, not too long ago, maybe a few weeks to a month ago or something like that, depending on, you know, your own timeline in this situation. And it doesn't necessarily feel like it happened between you and maybe the person or the people or the situation that you may be at odds with right now. It feels like this was after you guys maybe have tried to hash this out. Keep in mind, guys, that this is a general reading um, and I'm just explaining this, how it's coming through. So it doesn't necessarily have to work have to have worked out the way this i'm narrating it so just take this take this as kind of like a story or a guideline or like a um an outline of how this may have happened for you fit it into your life as you as it resonates for you but what this feels like here the scenario the story i'm going to tell you in, in terms of this is it feels like there was some type of There was an ability at some point or an opportunity. There's the word I'm looking for. There was an opportunity to, to hash something out at some point. That didn't necessarily go well, or at least it did not give you the, the result that you were looking for. And that's because this devil energy was still wrapped up in the situation. So then you, you, you guys went your own ways or you held your boundaries and you just left it alone, but you still stayed on your own personal uh, sides of the equation. And then something personal happened for you. Something happened. The universe came through and shook something up for you that allowed you to, to, to see past the devilish aspects of this situation and is now influencing you to want to take a leap of faith towards clearing this up. Okay, let's get some more here. You do have the four of cups at the bottom of the deck. For some of you, for some of you, this kind of actually feels like you got tired or you got bored of fighting about this. And you're just like, this, this isn't even like satisfying me any longer. Why? What I just heard was, this isn't satisfying my ego any longer. Oh, really? Well, guess where the tech kind of like the, the representation of ego is? Mars. Guess where that is? Oh, right. That's in Cancer. Ah, so now... What could have been fueling your ego in the past in terms of some sort of conflict that you had with somebody? It doesn't feed your ego that much anymore, doesn't it? 
So now that and that maybe that was the tower moment that happened for you. That shake up that got you to see something from a different point of view. And now you're you're like it like you're looking at it, this. I'm kind of seeing this four of cups as an energy of someone that had all these four cups stacked or had all these reasons why they were going to be upset. And now all of those have systematically poured out. And now you're looking over back at the situation like, well, damn, that wasn't even worth it. Or damn, I don't want to do this any longer. Like this is not, uh, I don't like this. Let's change this. Oh, okay. Let's go a little bit deeper here. Uh huh. Okay, good, 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 good. Anything else? Good. So the, the, the burden of these, these boundaries and this, this defense me mechanism has just become too much. The Ten of Wands. Now, for some of you, this I'm, I'm actually getting slightly that some of you, this could be a business situation. Um, and I think what's happening here are people are realizing that whatever burdens or baggage they were carrying is really not helping in this work environment. I don't know where that's coming from, but it's coming from somewhere that's going to resonate for somebody. All right. What else we have here? We have the seven of wands. We have the knight of pentacles and we have the six of wands. All right. So don't necessarily lose your element of uh, boundaries here, standing your ground. All right. And what's, what's really supportive here is the fact that the moon is in Pisces. So this is giving us an opportunity to really be compassionate, like I said in the beginning of the, re of the reading here, to see other people's points of view. But one of the lessons of Pisces is learning how to have, learning how to be, to flow with the collective and flow with everyone else around you, uh, being able to find the unity within all of us, but also being able to keep your boundaries because Pisces can be an energy where you can get lost in the sauce real easily. You can lose your sense of self within Pisces because it's such a collective, such a universal type of energy. But the key here to resolving this issue between you and whomever this is with is still maintaining your boundaries, still maintaining your sense of self and sense of identity and what your feelings are in the situation here. But working slowly but surely, methodically, okay, paying very close attention to the details of the situation in order to hash this out or work this out. If you approach it in this way, slowly but surely, methodically, very consciously, okay, conscious of your, conscious awareness of your reality and your feeling, but also conscious reality, or, or, I'm sorry, conscious awareness of the other side of the equation, the other sides of the equation, their feelings, their points of view and everything, if you follow through methodically and allow yourself to take this one step at a time, not jumping to conclusions, that came through very clearly, you will find success here, okay? You will find a success, six of wands, all right? There will be, there is a great, I'm not going to, I'm not going to speak in absolutes here in terms of like this will be, this work will work out well. What I am saying is there is great potential to really see eye to eye, to really meet, to have a meeting of the minds and to really find a resolution that benefits everybody. Okay, cool. Um, I do want to look a little bit deeper. Let's go into the two of swords and the nine of wands. What energies do we have? What can we talk about here? The, this, two of, this two of swords and the nine of wands was the stalemate or is the stalemate. You may still be in this stalemate energy, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're back to the Four of Cups at the bottom of the deck. And really, honestly, what I'm picking up on, what I want to say with this Four of Cups is, it feels like you miss each other. Like this could be, this definitely could be a romantic situation. It also could be a business situation. But now this also kind of feels like a friend situation. Like maybe your best friend or maybe a group of friends or maybe just people that you really vibed with at one point. Now you guys just, it feels like you miss each other with this Four of Cups energy. Okay. Underneath the Four of Cups is the Page of Cups. There, This is Pisces again. This is the, this is the reconciliation. This is the I'm sorry 
with the Page of Cups here. And I do feel like it's coming from both sides, or at least there's a mutual respect or a mutual element of remorse here, because underneath the Page of Cups is the Six of Pentacles, which is balance of give and take, harmonizing and union in that case. And then the Ace of Swords to the Eight of Cups. This really feels like you guys are ready to put the past behind you, because this has been eating you up inside. Nine of Swords, and there is a, a, a desire to work together and rebuild Three of Pentacles. Now, what has come through officially for the Two of Swords and the Nine of Wands here, that type of stalemate energy, who has come through? None other than Venus. There she is, the Empress. All right, Venus being in Gemini, there is there is unconditional love here. There is there is nurturance, maybe even desire. I did want to say that. Okay, um, so romantically speaking, you guys really could miss each other. Okay, there may be a strong desire to reconnect with each other. This could be twin flamey. I don't know, um, but the compassion, the nurturance, and the acceptance and unconditional love of Venus or the Empress is really on the forefront here, which is pushing you to want to end this stalemate, okay? Beautiful. Um, I'm wanting to get closing oracle guidance here from the Moonology deck today. So we're gonna give this five more shuffles and we're gonna get our closing message. One. Two. Three. Alrighty, kids. Closing Oracle Guidance, please, Spirit. There's more. Okay. That's enough. Overall energy at the bottom of the deck. Luck is on your side. Alright? And def luck definitely is on our side because Jupiter is trining. Hold on. Let me get back into this real quick. Come on, you. So sorry, guys. Hold on. Luck definitely is on our side because we have the trine with Jupiter between Mars and Mercury. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Between Venus and Mercury. All right. Luck is definitely on your side. There is an expansive energy. There is a, a, a big picture point of view that is able, much easier to be accessed in these energies at this time. So luck 100% definitely is on your side, but you still need to hold your vision. Okay, communication is key. The end of a tough cycle approaches. Okay, now the other cards, that, that was just all at the bottom of the deck. The other cards that have come out here are, yeah, okay. The other cards that have come out here, full moon in Leo, don't let your pride get in the way. But it's much easier to put your, to put your pride and your ego in the back seat right now with Mars being debilitated in Cancer, okay? You also have nothing is yet set in stone. So I, like, like I said, I'm not going to speak in absolutes here, all right? Yes, there is great potential for things to change, for things to shape up, for things to be worked out on a beneficial level, but nothing is set in stone. And keep in mind, everybody has got free will. You cannot control the actions of somebody else. You can only control your actions, your emotions, and your alignment, right? So just keep that in mind. Nothing is yet set in stone. So don't let your ego or your pride get in the way and tell you it has to be one way, okay? That's not the focus here. The focus is not just on what your ego or what your point of view alone has to say. This is about the, all of the people involved, all right? Keep in mind, moon in Pisces. This is a collective energy. This is a collective focus mentally, okay? And emotionally, okay? Finally... We have be bold and make the first move, cardinal moon, and the answers you need are coming, full moon in Gemini. You guys, this is all about communication. Communication is key, all right? Um, but if you, are, if you are feeling that energy of like, you're feeling really pushed right now to, you know, to come out of 
come out of your your come come from behind your defenses or come from out of like the wall you may have built up and communicate really talk about something honestly and on a on a emotional level on a um collective level on a on a very uh, unconditionally loving type tip then be bold and make the first move reach out send a text you know give a call send a note be like hey hope you're well i know it's been a while but I kind of wanted to know if maybe you wanted to talk or get a cup of coffee or like grab a drink or something like that. Be compassionate. Compassion is on your side. Okay. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic day and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading or our next session tomorrow. Yeah. Take care. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>